We are doing two things that we haven't done in a long time. One, we're finally getting back to work on the YouTube yacht. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. And two, we're doing another giveaway, five hoodies. And we'll do the details later on the video as well. It's gonna be an exciting day with lots of stuff going on, and I'm so amped to get back on this. And just so you know, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between the YouTube Yacht Project and the Backhoe Project as parts become available for that, and we work through that, and then parts become available for this. And the goal is to have that concrete floor on that ICF concrete floor system poured by the end of November or early December. It kinda depends on the concrete schedule, but we've got quite a bit of material. Step one, I'm actually gonna go grab the weed burner. This is covered in a really heavy dew right now but I'm just gonna try to burn some of this mess out because we just left and acted like we were never coming back. We'll just do a test patch next to this pile of wood. Listen, I'm not saying this is a good idea and I don't recommend doing anything you see on this channel at your place. That's a disclaimer, don't try it home. How did I tie this in a knot? There we go, beautiful. Not a lot of propane left. wanted to burn a little bit on its own. I don't want to use up all my propane doing this, you know what I mean? Whatever. I don't know, I'm not wasting time doing this. We're just gonna have to walk through it. There is a burn pile over here though, with some leaves and stuff, or some sticks. We'll see if we can get going. Yeah, it's got a bunch of sticks and stuff piled up in there from an old cleanup pile. We'll let that go up. Maybe the radiant heat will kind of push out and clean up some of this wet stuff. It's kind of going, everything's wet. Let's take a gander down here and see what we need to get into. Oh dear. So here she is from the front side. It's been so long since I've looked down this thing, but it looks good. So what we've got to do is finish the ICF flooring the rest of the way across there. That's going to be step number one. View from the inside looking great. The cleaning service hasn't been here in a while, but that's okay. Here's the bottom side of it. Yeah, I'm perfectly aware this place is a mess and I need her to get her cleaned up, but we're gonna do some other stuff first. Any chance I can get the sawhorse through that gap? It's not likely. We'll try some science here. No, I never was good at it. Try some science here. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't know how much actual work I'm gonna get done on this thing today. Right now, I'm just trying to find everything. I don't know what to do with the long screws or the plastic caps. They were in the back of the Subaru, but the Subaru doesn't have a back anymore, which is presenting a problem. I did find a couple spray foam guns, though. Let's see if we can get one of these cleaned up. They've been sitting for a few months. The best way to store these is with the can on, because that seals it from, should seal it from the foam, hard, foam hardening up on the inside. Got some foam built up on the outside here, but oh, I can move the trigger and look, there's foam coming out, so we should be okay. I'm gonna take that old can off though. This is just a can of cleaner that screws on there. I will say this, if you're doing a lot of spray foam, like more than, you know those cans that come with little plastic straws that you buy? This is the cheaper way to do it. I'm not a scientist, but I'd say there's probably twice as much in this can as there is in those little plastic straws. The biggest expense of this is this gun, but if you store it right and clean it, it'll last you forever. I'm gonna take this foam off. She's gonna pop maybe just a little bit. Throw it like a grenade. Oh dear. Don't go near their fire. So it's got a little spray. 
but then it also just screws on. Let's see if we can get one of these guns working. These have been sitting for like six months probably. I mean, ever since we worked on this last time. Here we go. Just trying to get the worst of the leaves out of there for now. Obviously we're gonna, oh no. Now they're pretty much all gone. Wow, that happened. Too quick. Got one honey locust hanging on there. So the bow, finishing up this bow section is gonna be the next step. That's what I need those plastic clips for. They screw down through the form and into the two by six that is down below. But, just so happens old Dirt Perfect says he thinks he has some down in his storage building from when he used to do ICF construction. So, let's run down there and check and hopefully we can get this knocked out. So he did have a few, we could probably get two more panels on. I'm gonna have to order some more. I think I'm recalling that the reason I stopped there last time is because I actually ran out of those. So I probably should have ordered some more and just forgot. I'm gonna be 100% transparent with you though that I haven't done a lot today because I am very distracted by the backhoe. I said we're gonna go back and forth between the two while we're waiting for parts, but we're not even waiting for parts because I haven't figured out the rings yet. And that is all that is on my mind. It is very hard to bring some focus over this, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna, here we go. Ready? Break. All right. I got a two by six. We'll bring a couple more down here in a second, but you see the two by sixes, how they fit on the bottom of that form. So we gotta get a couple two by sixes cut first. I'm gonna need you. Oh, fancy. So, that two by six is five inches in, so we can come over here. We can make a mark at five inches. And I can come here and just kind of guesstimate a mark somewhere around the 14 inch range here. We'll do the same thing over there. Just wedge the ladder in there like so. Same thing on this side. Go five, and just eyeball the 14s at, and I want it to stick over about two inches on each side. You guys can grab that in. Wouldn't that be handy? Y'all just, oh, embarrassing. Walk her across the bridge. Come on now. Come on, there you go. There you go. That's it. 127, there we go. No, oh, don't lose her now. There we go. Where the heck's that mark? Oh, dear. So I do want to crown these. One, that way whenever we pour concrete, the weight's pushing down just like you normally would crown a floor joist. And two, it is what's gonna be holding the ceiling when everything's said and done. So it's, it's still worth crowning and getting that part right. Should make it long enough, then we can trim it once we get these set. Oh yeah, that'll work. A little longer than it needs to be, we're at 135, but that's okay. Cause we gotta trim the ends anyway with the angle. So 135, who honestly knows? Pause for math, 67 and a half. We'll mark on here, 67 and a half. What we've gotta do, so we've got to center these pieces since we got an angle to cut on each end. So I'm making a center mark, 67 and a half. And then center on this board. I got to remember that crown is actually down since we're inverted right now. Center on half of this 
is going to be 65 and a half. 60 and a half is my center there. And we'll just use, get this cleaner off here, go ahead and put a spray foam on. That's a good way to find your cuts. And we're good to go. And then one down each side of it. I got my center marks. Like that. Center mark. Like that. Perfect. And this is where these little plastic pieces come in. It's just big old washers that pull up and it sucks the foam to that two by six. We'll put one on each end and we can flip it over and run them the rest of the way. gonna hold it in place for us. So obviously we still have several more panels to go. The good news is we have plenty of panels. The bad news is I'm already out of those plastic washers, but there's at least one panel so you can see how it goes. I got a little bit left time, a little bit left time, a little bit time left this evening. I'm gonna run some of these seams with spray foam. And then this seam here, there's the top of the ICF. That gets foam from there up to here. You can see the back side of that form that we just anchored to inside. That all gets removed and when it's removed, we want solid insulation from here to here. Concrete can come out and do whatever it wants out here, preferably from the edge of that concrete in. But that way we've got a solid, solid section of foam. So there's no thermal bridge right there. So whenever you're thinking about your little great stuff cans that you buy at the box stores with the plastic straws, which you can buy this at the box stores too. And think about how far this is getting me. We're still on the first can, the same can we used whenever we put that form together. There's just a lot more foam in these cans than what's in those smaller cans. And I just leave it. That's it, you just leave it on the can. Shouldn't have any air as long as everything's clean like it's supposed to. 
So there's a couple options. You can tape all these seams or you can just foam them. We're just gonna foam them. Mike, you'll get all them leaves out of there first? Oh yeah, you know it. I know this doesn't seem like a huge step, but these little details like this, this is where your time goes. Throwing these panels together and getting them thrown up here, doesn't take hardly any time, but all this little stuff you've got to do, that's where your time's at. It's also worth mentioning, the faster you pour on these light decks like this, the less you have to do this stuff. This is because it's been sitting here. The boards have kind of warped and twisted the, the two by six is in there. So they're pulling the forms one way or another. That's why you're getting these gaps in here. If we just stacked these up, pour the next day or the next week even, probably wouldn't even have to mess with this unless you really had something funky going on. For those of you following along the other projects on the channel, specifically the Ford 555 Randwin parked backhoe that we're currently rebuilding that we got from CNC Equipment, I finally was able to track down a tractor shop with a gentleman who knew exactly what I needed and told me exactly where I needed to look. So we have a slight backhoe distraction and then we'll be back to the YouTube yacht. But don't worry, all your questions that you have about that backhoe and the compression rings will be answered in an upcoming right, video when the new parts come in. Oh, there's a whole bunch of numbers in there. Okay. All right. We're working on our shoring walls now. We gotta get all these finished and framed. Just big obnoxious marks. I got my cut list. Start marking this stuff out. So we got those all cut and we are ready to start getting that side of the shore in. But real quick, let's talk giveaway. Now, most of you know, but if you don't, the YouTube Yacht Project is purely funded by YouTube revenue that we earn from the channel. There is no way that out of pocket, my wife and I could afford to do something like this. This comes from YouTube revenue, which means it takes you guys watching the videos and the channel growing to continue the growth of this project or the completion of this project. So we're going to do a giveaway, one, to thank you guys, and two, to kind of help this grow a little bit faster. Here's how we're going to do it. Somehow I ended up with just one board left to carry down. I don't know. Somehow I just ended up with one board left to carry. Anyway, here's how we're going to do it. Knowing that boosting comments not only helps grow a video, but by you guys sharing the videos helps grow the channel. The faster we grow the channel, the faster we can build and complete this thing, the more progress we can get done on it. That's how we're going to drive this contest. So in the comment, and keep in mind, I have no way of actually measuring this metric or verifying it, so I'm trusting you guys to be honest about this. No way that could go wrong. Just tell me where you share it. Go to Facebook, share the link, and be like, hey, have you checked this guy out? And just in the comment, be like, hey, I shared it on Facebook. You don't have Facebook? That's fine. Just be like, hey, I told my Aunt Sally about your channel. I think she's going to love it. She probably will. It's not bad stuff. <laughs> 
I ran through like 17 hypothetical names of who you could tell that's a relative. We're going with Aunt Sally. Just tell me who you told or where you shared it. That's all I want to know. When I go through and select the comments, as long as you are a subscriber, which I can verify and double check, and you told me who you told about it or who you shared it with, then you're going to be entered to win. We'll do the drawing. Stand by for calendar check. And you'll have till the end of this week, the 11th. Am I looking at that right? The 11th. You'll have till the end of the day on the 11th on this video to make that comment and then we'll announce it either on the 12th or the 13th. We'll do a live stream. If you don't like live streams or you don't watch them, you can just click the live stream. It'll say winners announced. You can look in the description. You can just read the description and get out of it. You don't have to watch the whole live stream. Hopefully that all makes sense. I'll put the details in the description for you to check out. Let's do some shoring. So I just got off the phone with the tractor store. It's called John Tractors. John's Tractors. That's who I'm talking to. And he found them. They are called Headland Piston Rings. It has an L-shaped cross section, just like we are looking at. Good news is, now we know what we're dealing with. The bad news is, they are expensive. And I don't mean like, hey, how much are those piston rings, Mike? Just a little bit more. I, this might be the reason they got rid of that tractor and they didn't want to deal with it. They're pricey pricey wow shocked me he's going to price just new pistons you can get replacement pistons for that tractor that just has the standard compression rings it's just a good old-fashioned four ring system with three compression rings and an oil ring he's going to price those it might actually be cheaper to buy a new piston and rings and just go that route and with the way one of those pistons looked it probably need replaced anyway we're gonna see the day's getting expensive and it's not even 10 yet Oh, we've got a plan for the track hoe, or track hoe, I wish. We've got a plan for the backhoe, and parts are ordered. I do apologize for the back and forth backhoe and YouTube content in this video, but when people call something a game changer, they're talking about a backhoe for a homestead. Because what that does for us, what that opens up for us, it's, it's unreal the amount of things we'd be able to do, including this project. I need that backhoe to do work on this exact project. I'm also going to put one, two, three, four two by fours up against the ICF directly under that. That is screwed in the wall, two screws in every stud, but I don't want to rely solely on the sheer strength of those screws. So we're just gonna add a little reinforcement uh, from there down to the concrete. I borrowed this push broom from Dirt Perfect like six years ago and I built my house and never, never gave it back. It's a permanent borrow situation. It's a good broom though. Now what? I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, this, this is efficient. Very, yeah, this is good. All right, we've got all these cut. I got it kind of laid out like a kit. I still got to put the boards up on top. We're gonna knock that out real fast. We're only running to here and here, and I'll explain why just after this commercial. I don't know how to select when to do commercials, but if I got lucky enough, where's the impact? Oh. It's in the porthole. Where else would it be? Duh. Lovely. A couple of these ended up just a little long. I'm gonna have to trim them up. I want them to be somewhat tight, but we don't want to lift up the floor system. Well, that's how we like it. I don't know where to put you guys. I'm filming because I've, I've built this small forest in here and it kind of blocks all the camera angles. Alrighty. Fantastic. 
So here's what we're looking like. We've got all our shoring from here all the way back down all three sides. That's perfect. The spacing is good. I got to pull this top over, kind of like that, and put a screw in it, but it looks really nice. There will be shoring right here as well, but I'm leaving it out. They're already cut. They're back there on that wall. Leaving it out so I can access both sides. That's the one thing. It kind of blocks all your access once you get this done. Same thing. There's going to be two that go right there, just like that. Leaving it out until right before we pour so I can access this if I need to. I'm not putting these shorings in yet until we close that off because with just one in the middle, if I get it too high, those forms will sit there and they'll teeter-totter. And that sounds like a good time and all, but it's going to make things complicated. So we'll wait till we get those rain across. Then we can just bump everything up tight into them. The next thing I want to work on this evening, we've got a little bit of time left. Believe it or not, I'm down to like six two by fours or eight two by fours of that whole big pile already. It's crazy how much lumber it takes just to pour some concrete. And like I said, it, it all gets reused upstairs. The majority of it gets reused upstairs. So it's not going to waste. It's just, it's an incredible amount of material. This is the stairwell opening. It will be a spiral staircase. And I cannot wait till we get to that part. One, it'll be an awesome build. I've decided to build it myself. And two, the code compliance comments are just gonna be fantastic. A lot of people think they know things when they don't. And that's fine, I'm here for it, bud. We're going to go ahead and start or get a rough idea how to form the inside of this stairwell. Cause I gotta get another lumber order in so it comes in by the end of the week. And uh, I need to get this figured out so I know what else I need to order. I have some stuff ordered, but I don't know if it's enough. A speed square, I've been looking for you. I have like 27 speed squares because I always lose them and then buy another one and then I find the ones I lost. Okay, we're upstairs now on the main level. And we're definitely not standing on the do not step. That would be frowned upon. I don't recommend it. Hello. So the way these work, there's gonna be a six inch slab on top of this. Well here. That's seven inches, okay? Could be a six inch slab on top of this. Yeah, it's a lot of concrete. And then there's this part here, which is also six inches deep. These little cutouts, we put rebar on these. This will be number five bar in the beams, and then the rest of it will be number four bar on a 16 inch grid all the way across. Top rebar grid for the slab, separate number five bar for the beams. These create beams. See how it's cut out, concrete fills in, you get it? It's like a big box beam, right? Basically what I'm trying to explain here is we got to get this and make our own right on the edge of the stairwell. So right here on this one, easy peasy. We just run the form material, some plywood or what have you, straight up, right? No issues whatsoever. That gives us a cutout that's six inches and that'll form up a concrete beam that runs right down the edge of this side. But we got to carry that all the way from that wall over to the other ICF wall. On that side, we got really lucky where the factory cutout is. It falls right where it needs to. We're gonna run those all the way around. Oh, yeah. That's gonna work perfect. Happy with that. All the way around, plywood on the inside, and then laser marks on the corners because I want that stairwell opening to be perfect whenever we're pouring. That way I know I got something good to screed off of. And then, uh, well, I lost my train of thought. What else I was saying about that? Let's go ahead and cut this foam out next. Where these beams run across here, we're gonna cut that foam out so that the concrete beam is taller. top of the wall would have been there, Mike. That wasn't... Your impulses are bad sometimes. So there's what the top of that spray foam looks like. 
That would be under what we foamed. See how well it comes in and kind of fills that all up for us. How's that sound? Does that sound pretty good? You like it? So there you have it. Hopefully you can kind of envision what we're going for now. Right along the edge of the stairwell, we'll have a much taller, thicker concrete beam. If you're having trouble envisioning it, no worries. As long as you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on and you tune in for the next video, you should see exactly how that stair opening turns out. We're gonna work on getting that finished up on the next video of this. This finished up. And if the material comes in in time and we just have enough time, we'll go ahead and start forming the outside, which isn't just gonna come straight up. There's gonna be a roll to it. We want a little fancy thing right there. And then we gotta figure out how to tie that into the stern and tie that roll into the bow. I told you guys, all in November, YouTube Yacht and Backhoe. We've got the funding because you guys are awesome and you're sharing the channel and supporting the channel and you absolutely rocked it. In October, we've got the time and we've got the know-how. Don't forget to hop down in the description and check out the contest rules so you know how to enter the contest to win one of the five free hoodies we're gonna be giving away. Also put a playlist to the build down in the description as well. That's it, that's all I got. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.